I was kicking it down south in the Georgia state. I was visiting my sister, man, she doing great. It was me and my wife in a pocket of green. She say, let's take a ride, check the southern scene. So, hey. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey. We hopped on the bus and we started to roll through towns where the people used to be bought and sold. Listen now, listen now. My folk, black folk, worked in the heat and even the cold. Then they fought Jim Crow, let the story be told. So on the Greyhound, it is cold as mm. <laughs> Cause the bus driver got the air conditioned way up. Then a woman with a child in her arms and one on her knee. In broken English, she said to the driver, uh, too cold, please. And the driver just ignores it, kind of shrugs it off. He says, shoot, I like the cold to keep my jerry curl soft. <laughs> you know? Yeah, bad. Now the child that's on the woman's knee is starting to cough and sneeze. So the woman asked the driver again, too cold. Sir, help! And the driver stops the bus. He says, all right, that's enough. I'm tired of you Mexicans always asking for stuff. This is my bus. You don't like what's going on? Go on back down there to Mexico where you belong. You know the old folk died so that we could be equal. Never thought we'd turn around and then oppress another people. All right, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, when I get the opportunity to speak with young adults such as yourself, it makes me think about when I was young and my mother and how much she sacrificed so that I could grow and be here. It makes me think about family members who put in so much energy and time and, and took risks so that me and my two little sisters and my cousins could have a better life. And I think about my community. You know, my neighborhood was like a vibrant place. There was always like music, people playing little African drums and stuff, poetry, fools rhyming in the cipher. There was always music going on and something happening. And we didn't have a lot of money, we didn't have a lot of resources, but people in my neighborhood were so giving and so sharing and so beautiful with each other. And that's the truth. And that's part of the story. However, I also sometimes think about how my mother, who I love, had some issues. You know what I mean? She had things going on. She had demons that she was wrestling with, and it was tough. I think about members of my family. You know, drama, pain, a lot of drugs in my community, a lot of drugs in my house, drug dealing, drug using. And I think about my community, as vibrant, as loving as it was, it was also a lot of violence, a lot of danger. I remember two doors down, my friend John John's father just killed him, pow, just killed him, you know, by getting killed by his own father. It was a dangerous place and a place of trauma. Now, some of you might have this duality, this complexity in your life, maybe. Maybe you have a mother who's a beautiful mother, and she supports you and loves you and works hard and cooks and helps you with your homework, but maybe she has a drug problem, or maybe she has an alcohol problem. Maybe you got a dad who's a great dad, and he takes off work to go and watch you at the game, but maybe he's a straight-up racist. And maybe you're embarrassed and feel ashamed of some of the things that come out of his mouth in a casual way. So for you all, I want to talk about this point and bring up two things. One, you all, every one of you as young adults, you have the creative power to retain and keep all the beautiful things that your parents and your family and your community do. You can keep that going as you grow old. And at the same time, you have the power and the choice to drop the baggage and drop all the drama that sometimes our parents and our communities and our families bring. You don't have to have just one or the other.
you know? And in fact, I think it's your opportunity to do so. The other thing is, no matter how crazy your family might be, you know, you got the crazy auntie, cousin Boo Boo. Everybody got a cousin Boo Boo. <laughs> Somebody here got a cousin named Boo Boo, I bet you. What up, Boo Boo? Somebody named Boo Boo. You know, no matter what, it's important for us to love them. And dig this. It's not just about loving the part that we like. We have to love them the whole being. So if you got a father that's racist, you got to love the racist side of him too. Now get me. It doesn't mean you have to love what it, he does or what he says or how it manifests, but we got to love the complete being in us. As a theater artist, as a hip hop artist, I have to love all my characters. Like the piece I just did for you, I can't just love the woman, the mother, and the children. I have to love the bus driver, even though he gets me upset because he's so prejudiced, you know what I mean? It makes me ashamed of being uh, my culture sometimes if he does that. But I have to love him. And if I don't love him, I can't tell the whole story. And if we don't love our, each other holistically, we move on with issues. And all of a sudden, that drug selling or that alcohol, that racism, it becomes a part of our issue as we grow into young men and young women. And this manifests sometimes with parents and kids. You know, you guys have your friends. It's my boy, it's my girl. And sometimes as parents, you know, parents are like, you know, I don't want you to be friends with Melissa. You know what I mean? Don't have Laquifa calling here no more. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know? And you're like, hold on, that's, why are you hating on Laquifa? That's my girl, Laquifa. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the thing is, there's a balance that can be attained here. For example, I remember when I was a kid, okay, I was eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old. We were all kids having a good time. When we got to about 12 or 13, I remember a split where some of us start to get into this, some of us start to get into that. I had a real good friend. He started to like start selling. He was on the other side of the law. And I loved him and I was still his friend, but it was like, I can't really hang out with you. You know what I mean? So you can still have love for your friends, but you can't hang out. I was like, all right, man, I'm, I'm about to go to acting class. All right, I'm about to go sell crack. All right, man, peace, peace, I'm out of here. You know what I mean? I still had love for him, but I couldn't, because we, we were going in two different industries. You know what I mean? So have love and tell the whole story. And it's fascinating for me because most of my stories up until now are about local things in the community. And yet I get the opportunity to travel. And I performed in Asia and up in the mountains. And man, I was in Botswana, y'all. You know what I mean? Like telling stories about my specific community. And people were like, I can relate. I love what you do. I'm like, how is that possible, man? We in Botswana. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they can relate to it. So tell your story. Tell the whole story. Tell all the story. Get specific with your tale. And from there, you can go to the world. All right, thank you so much.